75% of Americans say that they want a maximum age for elected officials. We're going to be talking about that today on this new segment on the left wing. My name is Desmond Price of the Independent Thought Podcast, joined by my co-host, Dr. Erica of Cocktails and Capitalism. And our guests for this week, we have the tandem of Jordan and Heather from the 805 Uncensored Podcast. So this comes straight from a CBS YouGov poll. We're going to put this up on the screen here really quickly. Axios did the cover here of 75% of workers, I'm sorry, 75% of voters want a maximum age uh, limit for elected officials, this new poll shows. It says that three-fourths of Americans think that there should be a maximum age, and this comes to the attention as the spotlight has been recently placed on incidents including Senator uh, Mitch McConnell and Dianne Feinstein freezing up, as well as the ongoing concerns for President Biden's age going into the 2024 election. Of these, of these people who were selected, this was actually a bipartisan effort that we're seeing here. 76% of people who registered as Democrats said that they were concerned by this, and 79% of Republicans are calling for this maximum age as well. Now, 45 of the respondents said that the maximum age should actually be 70, while a combined 30% of the respondents said either 50 or 60 was a good maximum wow. age. And only 18% said 80 should be the maximum age. Now, this is coming as we're seeing that in the Senate, the median age is 65, and the median age in the House is 57. There are 16 senators older than 75, and there are 18 that are between 74 and 70. So we've had this discussion a couple times on this show before, but I, I think it's something worth talking about again. As we're going into this new election in the 2024 cycle, Biden is old. Trump is old. We are seeing so many senators and people in the House, like Nancy Pelosi recently said that she was going to run for re-election again, even though she's into her 80s, has more money than God, doesn't really need to be there anymore. Dianne Feinstein is obviously, you know, like going into her 90s. People, Someone that people don't talk about enough, Chuck Grassley, has mm -hmm. been in office since the 1970s, still a senator in Iowa. So there are quite a few people around the country that's you know, honestly, should have retired a long time ago. But maybe that's just a little bit of my opinion. I want to kick this off to all of you guys. Do we think that there needs to be a maximum age limit? Or is that ageist? And we should have like a, maybe a comprehensive test, or maybe there shouldn't be any restrictions at all? I mean, first of all, I think, you know, when, when you have three quarters of the country is saying that they want a specific policy, it's really not like up for debate, right? Mm -hmm. Like they constituents want it. So that's what it should be. Like we have to get out of this like mentality that people know better, right? Or that politicians know better or that there's like an elite group of people know better. So for me, the majority of Americans want age limits. So that's it. We need to put in age limits. The other, the other thing about it uh, for me is I, I I mean I I'm supportive of a nuanced approach like you just suggested, Desmond. Um, you know, maybe some sort of a test or um, uh, anything like that. Um, but you have to also consider like who's administering it, right? right? Because you remember Donald Trump had his uh, whatever Disgusting cognitive doctor. exam. Yeah, his <laughs> cognitive exam. Yeah, but it was, but it was, uh, it was administered mm -hmm. by his his personal physician, and so you're gonna have a lot of corruption that occurs with that. Yeah. Um, but fundamentally, to me, it's like we like for me, it's a bigger conversation about like the people that are in power continue to think that they know better than Americans, and when Americans say they want something, we cannot continue to ignore that. So Americans want age limits, then we need to have age limits. Yeah. So I would say, <laughs> I, I would yeah. say um, age is one thing, but then being in DC for literally decades is an entire like other added dimension of corruption. And so I think it only makes sense to have age limits and to have some sort of cognitive tests for our leaders because um, otherwise, the longer they spend in D.C., the further and further they're going to be removed from working class issues, and they're going to be less and less inclined to do any th sort of thing to sort out um, the material uh, conditions. Yeah, I mean, I 
I absolutely think there should be age limits, just like you're saying, Heather, like the American people want it. We should have that, obviously. Um, with with regard to like the cognitive, like cognitive tests, I think that really could get really murky. We could find ourselves in incredibly murky water there. Um, and a lot of like, I don't know, debates and stuff. I feel like having a straight, a hard cutoff point like 65 years old, you're done. We had, you know, 30 years to be president, you know, a, a window of 30 years where you can be president or, you know, whatever other office. Um, and that's enough. You know, you need to you need to both leave the position because um, you are becoming more and more of a risk to this nation. You are <clears throat> making decisions that put our national security at risk. Um, you know, you are uh, potentially succumbing to the the will of your um, aides who are around you and kind of taking over for you, which is bizarre, but that happens, um, you know. But I think, um, yeah, we we really need to be uh, just locking down on a specific age uh, because, yeah, people who pilots have a, a cutoff point when they yeah. cannot cannot fly anymore at 65 they cannot perform, perform that task anymore um truck drivers uh assemblers nurses that do jobs that require require a lot of you know precision and skill once you are experiencing cognitive decline you can't be performing those roles anymore or you are putting people's bodies and their lives at risk that's just wrong and if you're making decisions about our national security um, <laughs> that is fucking insane. Like the intercept just came out with this article saying Pentagon funded study warns dementia among U S officials poses national security threat. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely a national security threat. And so cause people crying that this is ageism, like shut the fuck up <laughs> because Oof. there's, there is no, you need to recognize that people's freedom to do whatever they want to whatever point in their life should be curtailed at a certain point when there's all these other people whose lives could be at risk. And there are all these young people who are going into these careers who do not have an opportunity because these elderly folks will not leave. They just keep, keep the spot. So yeah, let's have oh. a hard, hard out, hard cut off. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I, I to carry off that point, Erica, do you think that there's such a point as like toxic politeness because <laughs> i totally believe in that and i think like this is a perfect example of that like we're going overboard with using the label of ageism mm -hmm. to just like shut down an argument to have any sort of like progress in terms of like bringing more youthful people into the government process yeah i mean i definitely think that's like a you know, toxic politeness for sure. And just, I don't know, it's it's just more of the rhetoric from the elderly folks who have been in charge of our society forever that we just need to keep them there. Um, and that this is ageism. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous to me. Yeah, but like, or I think of even like in the 1950s, like you weren't allowed to like talk about death, for example, right? Like that was considered like not polite, even mm -hmm. though that's mm -hmm. extremely toxic. You need mm -hmm. to be able to talk about those things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What were you gonna say, Desmond? I'm uh, surprised to see the Pentagon go after their friends like that. It's uh, it's very <laughs> unlike them to kind of call their friends out in the media that way. Um, yeah, you know, I guess I'll make those those dinners where they kind of you know scratch each other's backs a little more awkward in the future. Um, let's see here. There is a minimum age limit, right? You have to be 35 to be a president, 30 to be a senator, 25 to be in the House. Yeah. No one ever seems to have an issue with those limits. Like, like no one. There is no discussion anywhere <laughs> about getting rid of those limits. Yet, I do find it odd that and I saw focus groups on this recently. People, when they were asked this question, they all seem to say that there should be some kind of age limit or term limit, which I want to get to here in a second. But mm -hmm. people seemed uncomfortable at the idea of cutting it off on the top, saying, well, I know certain people in their 80s and they're still really sharp. And I know this person who's that age and they're still really <laughs> sharp. And and then some people on the left will be like, hey, I mean, like if Bernie was running again, I wouldn't want him to be disqualified because he's in his 80s. He's still really sharp. I mean, so I, I want to address that point specifically. 
Like, should we be, is, is the actual upper age limit okay? Or should it be the comprehensive age or the comprehensive like mental test? Because maybe some people who are a little older are still sharp. Heather, what do you and think? I, yeah, that's true. I mean, I agree with your point there. And I think you just mentioned something that offers an immutable compromise, which is term limits. We have term limits on the president. We have term limits on a lot of you know, state legislatures, we have, uh, you know, locally, we have term limits on our county, on our city councils, all of that. And so term limits might be an amenable compromise to that. And so then, you know, you, you are going to be having people that are terming out before they reach that age anyway, that's probably unacceptable yeah. to some people. Um, because you're making a good point, you know, um, but I get back to actually two things, one, which I already mentioned, which is like, if if the majority of voters want it, it should be the that that should be the policy. Like that's how we need to be making public policy is with like data and evidence. And as I see it, what American sentiments and opinions are, that is a data point. Um, but another thing that um, that you know, I think we also have to consider that we didn't talk about is why these people are continuing to try to push to stay in for so long, right? Yeah. Uh, why, why, why stay, why is Nancy Pelosi running again at 83 years old? Like uh, the same person who is opposed to not allowing Congress to uh, trade in the stock market, right? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> It's almost like those are related to each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why why Diane Feinstein has amassed an enormous wealth, even in the time since she has publicly shown cognitive decline. Uh, these people spend more money to get into office in one election cycle than they make 20 years there. So why? You know? Um, and I think that ter term limits, excuse, excuse me, term limits and age limits uh, can address that. Um, and I and I recognize concerns about like, like, yeah, like Bernie, if, you know, if there were age limits, would that count him out? Right. Um, or, or anybody for that matter. But again, back to that other point also about like, there are so many young people who are just as bright that have just as good of ideas um yeah. and and they simply are not able to get in because uh not the just the lower because, age limit yeah because of the lower age limit because of how much it it costs to run for office yeah, yeah. yeah the money um how how difficult they make it and uh and i and i i just think that you know, a lot of those problems are actually just solved by bringing in probably both term limits and age limits, which I, I support both. Um, okay. We just reason. spoke with uh, a very young politician from Washington named Josh Binda. Yep. Uh, you know, I think, and we were having a lot of discussions with him about how the old guard uh, city council members tried to keep him are, are actively trying to keep him out trying to get him recalled you know so the older folks in these positions really don't want to see the younger folks taking these roles a lot of the time and um yeah i don't know i think that's 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 something that we just need to like we need to start respecting the the value of our youth and what they can bring to the table and the fact that they are leading the charge with all of the fights that we need to be fighting right now for the climate and everything else um anti-policing fights like we need to be like looking at the wisdom of the young folks who need to be taking over the running of this planet and have better ideas about it than the old guard um mm -hmm. it's so important right now yeah absolutely. well look at oh, oh sorry jordan no i was just agreeing uh, I was going to say, look at where Jordan and I are in uh, Ventura County. Uh, the county just released their, um, their, you know, their candidates guide. They doubled to, to discourage younger candidates. They doubled the filing fees. Wow. They, they Fuck. tripled, Jesus. they tripled, they tripled 
the cost of the booklets, you know, the voter guide to, to have your little 200 words in the voter guide, they tripled the cost. Not only that, but candidates can get signatures, right? So who can go out and get signatures? Young people, right? Signatures used to be worth 50 cents a piece off of your filing fee. They reduced mm -hmm. it to 30. They reduced it to 33 cents. So these are like the little ways that they change things to try to to keep younger people out because younger people are the ones who don't have the money. Um, and as I see that, that's candidate suppression and both parties yeah. are doing it. Yeah. Um, and a way to combat that, again, is with term limits, age limits and, you know, other things with election. I mean, this is all election reform that we're talking about. How many people in Congress are actually supportive of election reform? <laughs> there's no money in that. What are you talking no. about? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there's no money in election reform. Come you can't on. Have, you can't continue your unusual trades. Um, <laughs> it's just uh, free speech. Corporations are just free speech, guys. They're just, they're just people. They should be allowed yeah. to vote.